Can you believe it? It's been two years, two years since Luminar Neo was first released. And not only have they won the Red Dot Design Award, but for the second year running, they've also won the award for the best photo editing software in the enthusiast category at the coveted Technical Image Press Awards. And bear in mind, they're developing this software in Ukraine, which last time I checked was a war zone. And I struggle to get things done when my kids are fighting. So these guys have my utmost respect for what they've managed to achieve with this software. So in this video, I'll look back at the past year's updates, improvements, and new features, because some of these tools may have slipped in under the radar, might be perfect for your workflow, and you don't even know they're there. And I'll also let you know my opinion of Luminar Neo in the context of two years of development. Does it live up to that initial hype of when it was first released? And is it worth it if you don't have it yet? One of the things that I really love about Luminar Neo is its ease of use. And that's one of the reasons I recommend it so highly because it's all slider based, really intuitive. But here's the thing, as they've added more and more tools, new features, it is becoming more complex to get around that. January 2023, they actually announced um, a feature called onboarding. And the concept behind that was giving you guys a helping hand as to how to best use the tools. Let me show you how that works. So from within the catalog view, if we come over to the sample images on the left hand side, you'll see that all of the thumbnails have a little yellow icon in the top left corner. So that little mortar board there, if we open that up, that's indicating that we have these tool tips. So we can just click on one of these. So for example, replace the sky, have the suggestion for this photo. And just like that, the sky is dropped in. And you will notice the wonderful thing here where this guy is and we actually have the gap in the rocks. If I switch to a different sky, you can see that that is actually being updated and recognized. And I'll be honest, when this tool first came out, I'm not convinced that the AI would have actually known to, that there was a cutout in the rock there and it would have been a bit of an issue with masking. So that is just testament to the fact that these tools, these AI technologies that are inside Luminar are continually being updated. And every now and again, I revisit a tool that I haven't opened for a while and I'm pleasantly surprised that it is performing better than it used to. And Sky AI is one of those. So that's onboarding. What's the next update? Okay, Luminar Neo 1.7.0, additional plugin functionality, presets, previews, and more. So previously, the extensions HDR Merge, Focus Stacking, Upscale AI, they were only accessible through the standalone version of Luminar Neo. However, now we can access them via the Lightroom plugin, which means we can expand our possibilities for our editing workflow. The presets preview on hover is a really nice touch because we want to be able to see those presets, what they're going to do to our photos without always having to click apply and wait for that effect. Now in real time, as we hover over the presets, we get to see that effect on the photo. And a common thread that I'll mention just this once and then I'll leave because it's present in every single one of these updates is that Luminar Neo has been made more stable. It is running faster in some aspects and any bugs that have been identified by users sending in feedback has and squished and eradicated by the developers and that's all documented in this online and I'll put a link to this really useful resource if you want to dive in a bit deeper. Now with update 1.8 in April, while we're not seeing the release of a brand new feature or tool, it's this kind of update that I actually really like because they've enhanced certain things within the program that actually make the user experience much more enjoyable, such as in the menu system, when we move over the LUTs, the lookup tables, we can see what that LUT is going to look like on that photo immediately. The same for profiles as well, camera profiles. As we hover over, we see that effect right on our photo. And it just really helps to get, make our enjoyment of using the program so much more. So good update there. Now, as I look through this colossal list of updates, one thing is apparent that from March, April, May, right through to June, it was very much a consolidation period in terms of the development of Luminar Neo. So what do I mean by that? Basically, no new features, no new tools. What the developers were focusing on was usability improvements, stability improvements, and improving the results that we're getting out of the extensions. Now, you may or may not have seen my initial rather scathing review of Upscale AI. I was really disappointed with that extension when it first came out. However, it's great to see that the developers have gone back, revisited that extension and improved it. The results we get out of it now since this improvement and update are far, far superior from what we saw initially when I first did that review. And we also saw the addition of the new info button next to most of the tools to help us better understand how to use them. 
For me personally, as a landscape photographer, July was pretty exciting because that saw the release of the Panorama Stitching Extension. And in true Skylum style, they didn't just bring us any old panorama stitching tool like you might find in another photo editing app. They pushed the boundaries of creativity so we could actually not only stitch photos together, but we could also import video and create panoramic photos from the video. They also gave us the feature to take individual frames from our moving video image so that we could create a pano that had action shots built into it throughout the pano. It's a really, really clever and creative use of a pano tool. Okay, let's jump to update 1.13. And this is pretty funny because I mentioned at the beginning that there may be certain tools that have been added to Luminar Neo that you may have missed. This is one of those tools for me. I was away on holiday or something and I came back, I opened Luminar Neo and I was editing a photo, jumped into the tools and all of a sudden I saw the blur tool there. Drop down, Gaussian blur, motion blur. I'm like, where did this come from? So that was a really pleasant surprise. Now with this update, we also saw the release of the very impressive studio light feature. Now, when I first saw it, I thought, nah, this might be a little bit gimmicky. And to a certain extent, it can be if it's not used correctly. But I opened it up, I started playing around with it, and all of a sudden I became aware of the possibilities of this. We can even change the color of the lights as well to emulate as if we've put colored gels on our lights in our studio. So it's actually a really creative tool, very, very clever, because if you think about it, the computer is having to understand a two-dimensional image and visualize that in a three-dimensional space, even though that's not how it exists in the file, and then wrap light around that three-dimensional form. So how they've managed to do that is very, very impressive indeed. Okay, with update 1.14, we saw the addition of another couple of really cool tools. We saw tilt shift added to the blur options, but we also saw the introduction of the neon and glow tool, and I covered that in a previous video where I actually added some streaking lights to tail lights on a car. I thought it might be more gimmicky than what it is, but the more I thought about it, the more there are actually a lot of practical applications for it. Neon and Glow came out in September, but it was in October with another update where that tool really became a fully fledged tool. And that gave us the ability to freeform draw a line and we could specify polygonal lines. So we could go point, hold shift, go to another point and it will do a straight line so that we can get a really nice uh, glowing laser effect, whatever effect you want. So I'm really looking forward to applying that to a Star Wars shoot that I did a couple of years ago. I created laser effects in Photoshop. It was taking me ages. I can do it in Neo in seconds. So that's opened up a whole world for a previous project that I shot. So I'm very excited to revisit that tool soon. <laughs> okay, version 1.15, that's when we start to see the generative tools coming in. And that is just another world opened up for us photographers. I think 2023 will be remembered as one of those years where things just stepped up a whole nother level. Love it or hate it, generative tools announced their arrival last year big time. But before I get into that, I just wanted to say, if you guys don't have Luminar Neo yet and you're on the fence about getting it, they are currently running a Skyland promotion of 20% discount. I'll put a link in the description below just to celebrate their second year anniversary. Okay, and with the generative tools, let's kick things off with the first tool, Gen Arrays, which came out in October. And it is no hyperbole to say this is groundbreaking stuff. It's using artificial intelligence and the algorithm has been trained to understand photos and composition and things like that so when we select an area in our photo and we want to get rid of it it can do it and replace it with content aware intelligence so it's not guesswork anymore it's artificial intelligence creating what should go into our photo in an area where we remove an object it's truly remarkable you can only really understand it when you start playing around with it yourself so November saw the introduction of Gen Swap, which just took things to a whole nother level. It was prompt based AI. What I mean by that was when you want to replace something in your scene, you just type what you want to have replace the thing you're removing and the AI will put it into your photo. Sometimes things go a little bit awry. And again, that's a quite a comical thing to play around with. 
It can take a while for the results to come back. But again, I think this is a tool that with time is just going to continue to develop and very much become another part of our tool set. On the update right up here, it says, welcome to the world of infinite possibilities. And it truly feels like that. When you can imagine it, you can write it, the computer, the AI can actually create an image to represent what you've typed in. You just can't fathom it. I thought I understood computers until this came along. Let's suppose you've taken a beautiful photo of your subject, but you just haven't left enough breathing space around that subject. Happens to the best of us. So what you can do with Gen Expand is just add additional pixels that will be intelligently filled to match your background so that you can recompose the photo. This also comes in handy, let's say you've taken a horizontal shot and you wanted to use it on Instagram, more of a vertical format, you wanted to add some new sky or foreground, it can absolutely do this. So it's actually a really practical tool, another great addition. So the last thing we're covering, version 1.18, bit of an anti-climax really, because we've gone full circle back to the beginning, which was onboarding. So they've added new sample images with tool hints and tips showing you how to use those tools. So two years ago, when Luminar AI was replaced by Luminar Neo, there were a lot of doubters out there thinking that Luminar Neo wasn't going to last and that would be superseded by something else. I tried to assure people that having spoken with people at Skylum that these guys were 100% dedicated to keep developing Luminar Neo. It was the platform of the future. AI, great program, but it didn't allow for that expansion that they were hoping for. They realized it was the wrong direction for the program. Neo was the rightful successor and I'm so happy to see that two years on, it is still being developed. So I said at the beginning, I was gonna let you know what my favorite edition, favorite tool was introduced in 2024. I was hoping it was gonna to come to me as I was going through these, I thought, like, absolutely, that was my favorite. However, with uh, reflection as I'm going through this, what has really struck me looking at all of these updates, there are so many incremental improvements listed in every single one of these updates that has just elevated the overall quality of Luminar Neo that when I sit here, having had a quite a long break from YouTube, coming back to Luminar Neo, photo editing, open it up and I just found it was a joy to use. The masks were working better, the extensions were working better, um, brushwork, everything was just seeming to flow. And that's what I want as a photo editor. I just wanna be in a state of joy, a state of flow when I'm using these tools. So the continual incremental improvement is what I've actually liked most in 2024. <sighs> Boring, I know. Look, what do you want me to say? Gen swap, wow, it's amazing. But look, generative tools, absolutely are going to be the thing of the future. Um, I'm just keeping it real. I like a program that is stable, that works well and is a joy to use. And currently that is absolutely what Luminar Neo has become. So the final question is, has Luminar Neo lived up to the hype two years on after its release? I say absolutely it has. And if you're a new photographer looking to get into a good photo editing platform, I would highly recommend Luminar Neo. Currently 20% discount. I've got a link in the description below. Certainly go and check that out. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already and are looking for more tutorials on how to use and get the most out of Luminar Neo, uh, hit the subscribe button and I will see you in another video very soon. Thanks for watching.